Welcome back everyone to the Writer's Parachute. We are guiding author and writer dreams to a perfect landing. Today we have with us another very special guest. We have with us Dr. Elizabeth Page. She's an author and podcaster and we're going to be talking to her about her children's books about compassion, gratitude, mindfulness, and yoga that feature pets. So we'll want to talk to her pretty soon. But of course, we got a couple of things that we want to talk to you first about. We're going to have our topic of the week coming up in just a moment. But I want to put out there another reminder about the Buy Me a Coffee. It's something that we've added here to the Writer's Parachute. Um, the Writer's Parachute is now giving you, the listener, an opportunity to be part of the team by buying me a coffee. It can be tea, it can be wine, it can be a root beer float, anything that your heart desires. There's no reason to limit our resources or choices. So whatever you choose, I truly thank you. And your support is helpful. It helps us cover the cost to produce episodes by hosting services and upgrade the occasional piece of equipment that we need here at the Writer's Parachute. We work hard to keep ads to a minimum. As we grow support, we're going to be dropping more and more ads. And we hope that you understand that it is cost effective for us to have supporters. We love you for it. Your support is helping. And we want to thank each and every marvelous supporter. I truly believe you're all amazing. And keep an eye out for some extra special monthly surprises that we're going to be having on the Writer's Parachute. Please go check out more information at thewritersparachute.com. And um, that's our website. And then, of course, we're going to get on with the show. And thank you. So today's topic of the week, we're going to talk about book categories. Now, there are a lot of ideas around back book categories. And what I'm talking about is how do you categorize your book? This mostly comes up a lot of times on Amazon, but it does come up on other book platforms, but most especially on Amazon. Now, I would say that when you start out, a lot of times people are going to tell you to go check out the BSEC codes, which is at BISG.org. And you can look at the list of BSAC codes. These are the actual legal codes that are assigned for books. They give you all the categories. I, myself, and Liz, we write children's books, so we would be in juvenile fiction. So, and then they have all these subcategories to define specifics about your book. Now, if you've gone over to Amazon, you've probably seen that. Number one bestseller in kids' books about emotions and feelings. Number one bestseller about kids' how to go to school or first day of school or all of these things. These are the categories that I am talking about today. So what I want you to think about is what best explains your book? What category works best for your book? If you were a parent or a child or a reader and they were looking for your book, what category do you think they would expect to find your book in? And then we use the categories in conjunction with keywords. Now, keywords are searchable words or phrases where people will be looking for that, where they would go to, say, Google and go, I'm looking for a children's book about mindfulness. Well, guess what? If you use mindfulness as a keyword or you use that as a category for your book, Liz's book is going to pop up. <laughs> and there you go. That's how it all works together. Now, there are some people that look for these um, obscure categories, ones that don't have a lot of competition, because I will tell you a lot of the main categories do have a lot of competition because there are a lot of children's books written about specific things and topics. So, yeah, you might have one or two of these big categories. And yes, you do want to look for some of the lesser categories, but be careful. Do not put your book in a category if it is about, you know, kids playing and they see a truck. Don't go put your book in a category for trucks and automobiles. That That's really kind of cheating the system. I don't agree with that. Now, some people will tell you it's perfectly fine. But, you know, you have to decide what's right for you and what's right for your book. Now, I am going to make a recommendation for this. This is a great program that is out there. It does cost about $100, but I find that it's well worth it, especially if you're writing multiple books. And it's called Publisher Rocket. 
It is a great um, program to help you select categories and keywords and help you decide what works best for your book. And don't forget that uh, KDP Amazon through your Amazon Central will allow you to expand your total number of categories to 10. All you have to do is go to your Amazon Central account and send them an email and tell them you would like to expand categories to 10. Oftentimes you don't get to pick and choose which version of your book that category will go to unless you signify that, but um, they will give you a maximum number of 10 categories for all versions of your book. So that's helpful, knowledgeable for you guys. I hope that's helpful. Do go check out Publisher Rocket. I am not an affiliate, so I don't get anything for that. That's all for you guys, nor do I get anything from Amazon on a kickback to tell you about Amazon Central. So just to let you know, that is all for you. But of course, we want to get on with our podcast. The reason we're here today, we want to talk to Dr. Elizabeth Page, and we're going to be talking to her. She's an author podcaster. She has done an amazing series of kids books about compassion, gratitude, mindfulness, and yoga, and they feature pets. So Liz graduated from UC Berkeley with a doctoral degree. Do you want to hold up those books for us there, Liz? Sure. Health and studied lesbian and bisexual women's health for over 20 years. Then she quit to write a book, The Peditation Companion, with her mom. Liz followed with her five children's books on mindfulness, meditation, gratitude, compassion, and kind kindness. She has taught mindfulness for two to six year olds and started two podcasts called Mindful Happy Kids and Mindful Happy Adults. She interviews authors, artists, musicians, mindfulness, and yoga practitioners, and talented kids. Lids also reads from her books and plays the cello, drums, French horn for fun. She is obsessed with her skipper, skipper key, hippie. Skipper key, yes. Yeah, she was featured in a couple of her books. So welcome to the Writer's Parachute, Liz. How are you today? I'm doing great. It's an honor to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, well, you and I have been kind of friends and kind of compadres here for a while. I've been on your podcast, which I love. And, uh, you know, we talk a lot about Ken's books and I'd love to get you on here. And you kind of had a really interesting journey for writing and publishing your books. And I want to know how that challenge kind of helped you get through getting all of these books out there and then starting these podcasts. Well, I started as a researcher for my undergraduate degree. I was researching spatial cognition, which I'm horrible at, absolutely horrible at. And then I went on to a doctoral degree in public health and studied substance abuse for 20 years at Kaiser in the division of research. And then every article I was reading started out with and so many people have died from alcoholism. So many people have died from smoking. Mm -hmm. And that gets you down. Mm -hmm. After a while, that gets you down. So I quit my job or retired from my job and decided to try to take care of my health for a while. And meditation was part of my health. But I could not meditate mm -hmm. at all. I would sit still and and I'm sure many of you can identify with that. Oh, that that's yeah. what, that's I, my, my <laughs> mind takes over and goes like a cabillion different directions. So it's like, they call that monkey mind. Yes. <laughs> but what I did discover was that if I sat with my dog, Pago at the time, if I sat with Pago and just pet him, that my mind would calm down. And most people know that when they sit with their animals, they can calm down. Mm -hmm. So we did something. We I talked to my mother about it, and we wrote it up and called it a petitation, P-E-T, and then etation. Mm -hmm. right. And we wrote it into a book called The Petitation Companion. And I wrote the book with my mom, okay. which was very interesting. Yes, yes, I imagine that would be very interesting. I'm not sure I could have done that. So again, you recently published the series, the the Peditations, which is a series of books now. It's expanded from the Peditation Companion, and it's for children. 
and they focus on mindfulness, gratitude, compassion, and yoga. And they're all kind of from the perspective of Pippi the puppy to make them accessible for, for even smaller children than what we would normally expect. So can you explain how this focus and concept uh, happened for these revolutionary books? Because I honestly have not found anything related to them or anything similar in any way. I think you've truly found a new category. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, the thing is, kids are having so much trouble lately. Mm-hmm. They have trouble in school. They have trouble acting out. They have trouble through the COVID has been really difficult on kids. Mm-hmm. And my, they're finding that mindfulness in the schools is really helpful. But what they do is put your hands on your tummy and breathe in and breathe out and put it Put and look at a, a water going through a, a, a jar go in one day one and I'm like no Mm-mm. I'm like we've got to teach them in ways that's going to be accessible mm-hmm. so that's why Pippi learns mindfulness and she learns how to be grateful and she learns how to be kind and she then there's Norman who's the grumpy cat ah. who is everyone's favorite character <laughs> And Norman is grumpy with Pippi and Pippi gets really angry and has to do the loving kindness meditation, which is mantra saying, oh, I love you and da 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 da. And so so Norman, the goal of Pippi is to teach Norman gratitude. So she and her friends take Pippi around to meet a three-legged dog and a deaf cat and and a rabbit who's lonely so that she can show that it's hard to be lonely. And then they teach, they basically teach Norman gratitude. Awesome. So, so they basically, and they sort of taken off from there and each book specializes in a specific category. Right, which we're gonna talk about now. So each book has its own kind of theme and intent, and intent around each one of these subjects. So can you kind of give us a brief rundown of each of the titles and what their theme or intent is for the meditation books? Well, it's Pippi. I don't know the exact titles. Uh-huh. I don't want to read so Pippi, yeah. learns Pippi the Puppy Learns About Mindfulness. Okay, Pippi the Puppy Learns About Mindfulness is where she learns the basics. Mm-hmm. She learns how to sit still. She learns how to eat mindfully. She learns how to not gobble up her food. <laughs> not, 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 not anymore. She is not allowed to do that anymore. She's not allowed to throw her toys around. She has to sit and appreciate them. She learns that um, that that she can go to her to her mom's. She has two moms, mm-hmm. and she can go to her mom's for comfort when she's scared, and they pet her, which is another kind of mindfulness. So that's the first one. The second one is. What's the name of that? Yeah, she learns to be kind to herself and to others. Okay, now Pippi is not a kind dog. She's adorable and she can be very sweet. Mm -hmm. But in her temperament, she's not kind. Kind of bites. Mm -hmm. And and she is she's very critical of herself. Mm -hmm. So she went through obedience school and she was very critical and she learned how to deal with that and she learned how to deal with um, learning how to be kind to, to other animals through that book. So she learned the techniques and tricks on how to do that. All right, awesome. And then we have Norman, the cat learns to look on the bright side. I love these titles. Oh, that's the one where he learns how to be grateful. All right, and then we have Carly, the cello finds her forever home. Now we have kids getting all kinds of animals from the SPCA. Mm-hmm. So they always use the terminology, they learn to get their forever home. Right. So I had a cello that I got from a pawn shop. Mm-hmm. And I adopted this poor, this poor cello. It's one of the few ones that I could afford. Mm-hmm. And I adopted Carly, that's her name, mm-hmm. from the pawn shop and brought her home. And then this story is about how she gets played by an 11 year old girl and she learns how to play in an orchestra. And it doesn't matter what she looks like, she sounds beautiful. Right. So So she finds her forever home. Yeah, so even even whether it's a pet or an item, even if it's not perfect, it it needs a home. I love that. And And Pippi has a cameo in that one. Ah, awesome. And then we have here that we have yoga fun with Pippi and Norman. 
Now this one, I have to hand it to my illustrator, Jean, Jean de Jean Dier, mm -hmm. because she did an amazing job with the illustrations on this. It's all kinds of animals doing yoga. So imagine this, imagine a boa, a, no, is it a boa? A cobra, mm -hmm. a cobra in a python, in a flamingo pose. Oh, wow. <laughs> so she was able to draw that. She yeah. drew a, um, a lion in a do downward dog pose. <laughs> she was amazing. I mean, it's just amazing. And they all look like they're doing it. So it's a great story. And Pippi is not very patient with herself. Mm -hmm. She gets very frustrated. She cries. She plays with her back during Shavasana, which is when you're supposed to be relaxing. She's not a very good yoga student at first, but she gets better and better through the book. Right. Well, I've read all of these books. I absolutely love these books by Dr. Page. And I would tell you if any of these topics or any of these subjects, if you want to start anywhere, I don't think that you need to read them in any particular order. I think they would work great for you. I loved, loved the, uh, you know, yoga fun with Pippi and Norman. I do love those illustrations. They are just absolutely adorable. But I think you will find usefulness for your children. And we're talking not only children in early school, but preschoolers. These are amazing books for preschoolers, which is pretty rare. And I think that they would be very good for you. So I do encourage you to go out and get your copies. We will have the links to all of her books in the show notes for you. So of course, go, go check that out. So um, now for these, just so people know, mm -hmm. I don't sell my books. Ah, I give them away. Aww. <laughs> so what you would do basically is email me at my email address and send me your snail mail address and I can send you a copy of it. Okay, great. Well, we'll put that information in the show notes for them. So do you have more books that you're working on that, that we can expect soon? We do. I have a book about, it's called The Creatures of the Herb Cafe, and it's a series of books, mm -hmm. and it's insects, very, very bright colored, interesting, just like George here. Mm -hmm. That's the model for the, um, for the illustrations. Okay. And it's going to be a series of books about insects and amphibian children that go through real life circumstances like socioeconomic dish issues when they can't afford extracurricular activities and bullying mm -hmm. and climate change and all kinds of real f and loss and grief mm -hmm. and all kinds of real and even the coronavirus a virus that attacks their community it's so real live issues that go through, that children go through. And that's a series of books. So that one is going to be book by book by book put on my podcast. Okay. And then I'm doing a book on anxiety for a, a book on meditations for kids. Mm -hmm. And focus both basically specializing for kids with anxiety, although it's good for all kids. Okay. But it's really for a kid, for an 11 year old who has really real big problems with anxiety. And she is taught um, the meditations by her, her um, Pago, her service dog. Okay. Well, so. this, this sounds amazing. So, I mean, what she's encouraging you to do is to go check out her mindful, happy kids podcast and her mindful, happy dogs uh, podcast and check out her new books that are coming out. I think these are amazing. And I think they are very helpful because it is, you know, in all of your books, it's a, it's a lovely story with kind of a sneaky message that's sort of hidden in, in between the lines. And I do love that as a former reading specialist. I think those are the best kind of books for kids because they're being entertained and learning without realizing it. So that's always great. So we talk here on the Writer's Parachute to a lot of authors about going through the publishing and writing journey and that they all pretty much run into some kind of challenge or obstacle or some kind of issue. And so we want to know what was that obstacle or complication for you and what do you think that you learned from it? What a great question. Thank you. <laughs> well, I... 
not my young, young, young child because it wasn't up yet. It wasn't available yet. But as a, I would say the last five years, I didn't learn enough about social media to do enough publicity for my um, books or for my, um, for my podcast. So I'm learning, I learned about Twitter and I learned about Facebook. So I've been doing that. I've been tweeting and doing Facebook mm -hmm. and posting on Facebook. And I have a pin interest account. That's how you say that, pin interest? Pinterest. Pinterest, yeah, whatever. Yeah, see, uh, that's how good I am. <laughs> that's fine. And, I didn't know to begin with either. <laughs> and then I'm taking a class in social media and marketing through Stanford in the extension program so that I can learn more about that. So that's one thing. Yeah. And then I also have been told by many people that learning poetry is really important to learning how to write in a very, it's helped me write more succinctly mm -hmm. and more more beautiful language than I was before. Mm -hmm. And I have in the Creatures from the Earth Cafe, at the end of each chapter to transition from chapter to chapter, mm -hmm. they have a Poetry Friday where the kids write the poems, mm -hmm. the creatures write poems. And so it begins with, it, the chapters end with a poem and then they begin with a poem. Well, so I'm learning how to write some poetry. So I'm taking a class in that because I stink at that. Mm -hmm. And then I would also tell my old, my young self that you don't just need to learn how to write scientifically in grant writing, which I'm actually very good at. You should learn creative writing. Mm -hmm. So I wish I had taken some more creative writing as a younger person and right. started yeah. writing children's books sooner right well and, and I think we we all feel that way and what I would say is these are excellent points that she's bringing up because here we have a, you know very successful author here she's written multiple books she has two podcasts and still she's struggling with some things because none of us are good at everything but what I love about what uh, Liz is talking about is she's taking action on each one of these I mean she's learning to be more effective on social media by taking this extension course. And, and that's kind of the way it is. And, you know, I'm going to go back to one of my sayings that I say all the time, you don't learn anything from being perfect. You learn from messing up. So, you know, you kind of have to take the writer's parachute motto here and just go jump off that cliff and just make sure you have your parachute ready for when you do, uh, you know, that's kind of the way we look at that. And then this lyrical poetry talk that you're talking about and the creative writing, they all kind of go together. And that just comes with time. I don't think that, you know, I think there are certain people who are very lyrical in the way they write, but I think we could all learn that whether we're writing poetry or whether we're, we're writing other things. And I have found the most effective thing for me is to read it out loud. Yes. Because if I read it out loud or I have somebody read it back to me, I hear the problems. I hear where the words don't fit well together. And that's kind of what you're talking about is that lyrical sentence, that lyrical prose that we're trying to get across where it just naturally kind of rolls and flows through you with the emotions and it doesn't feel like daggers or darts hitting you <laughs> with words. So I think those are excellent um, things for you. So I want to know if you could talk to your younger self now, what do you think you would tell yourself? What advice would you offer? Oh, I just wanted to say, because I forgot to say it earlier. I also have a lot of help from my critique partner, Je um, Deb Johnston. Mm -hmm. She's been amazingly supportive and helpful and she's a poet. So she's really helpful. Mm -hmm. Anyway, what would I tell my, what would I, what, what was the question? Your younger self? If, if you could go back and talk to your younger self today, what do, you, what do you think you would say? I would tell my younger self that even though I was preparing for a research career, that the research classes I was taking would be helpful later on in my life for Liz Act Two. That's what my partner calls it, Liz Act Two. <laughs> that I would be, that the qualitative research, which is text based research, not number based research. Mm -hmm. that that would teach me interviewing skills for my podcast. Mm -hmm. And the research skills that I learned would teach me how to go back and research my authors for my podcast, because I do a ton of research before I have my authors on my podcast. Mm -hmm. So those are two things that I would tell myself. 
um, be kind and gentle to yourself. They tell you that yeah. is not effective. <laughs> yeah. Not effective. Mm -hmm. That being kind and self-compassionate is much more effective than the whip. Yep. So I'm trying to, and the, and also um, to learn mindfulness and, and meditation earlier, mm -hmm. I was so against it. My uh, friend used to tell me that, I mean, I used to be like, no. And <laughs> then, you know, eight years later, I'm teaching it. So. <laughs> there you go. Well, you know, I, I, I say that it's kind of serendipity. It's like the things that we really resist is like we end up being really good at them. <laughs> which I find funny but you know it's it, you know all of these things are great and it's just I think it's just that we don't recognize when we're younger that the experience is the point the journey is the point it's not the specific stops it's not the specific goals or the levels that we reach it's the journey it's the accumulation of what we know and learn that gets us through this point right now to the next. And so I think that's excellent advice for a younger person. So what three things do you wish you had known or that somebody had told you before you started on this writing publishing journey? Um, hmm, it's another good question. I think it's important to it's a lot of a lot of some of the same stuff that I would have told my younger self mm -hmm. but I think it's important to learn from all of our experiences and know that all of our experiences feed into each other and that almost nothing is done for naught that you can take something that feels like it's totally outside of your field and maybe sometime later as long as you're feeding your brain cells it'll come back and feed you later. Right. Um, education, I think is really important. Keep educating. Mm -hmm. Not only because it helps with dementia later, which I'm hoping it will, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, I find that educating myself has been really helpful in keeping myself active, active, active in communities and, uh, and actually active in my own work. Mm -hmm. if that makes sense yep so education I think is really important and three things what's the third thing listen yeah listen to what other people have to say around you like the author's parachute mm -hmm. <laughs> watch that and listen oh. <laughs> thank listen you listen to what people have to say right they have a lot to teach you and, and this is, you know, this is perfect because we don't often give ourselves grace to know that we can't possibly know everything. Now, a lot of people call me an expert and stuff like that. And I'll be the first one to tell you, I don't know everything. I know a lot about a lot of things. In fact, you know, my bio says I'm a random fact finder because that's how I learn. I learn something new every day because I have to feed my mind because my mind is too active. But that doesn't mean I know everything. And I find things that are surprising and listening. If I listen to people, I learn something every time that I didn't know. And this is where, you know, we have to stop the talking so much, although I do a lot of it, but I do try to listen because those little kernels of gold of stardust are buried in what people are saying and not saying and if you listen you'll catch them and it, it it kind of makes everything work together and you know getting that education is so important you know because as long as we're seeking as long as we're asking the questions then we know we don't have the, the journey done. We know that there's still more to learn. We know there's still more to do. And I think these are excellent, excellent topics to talk about. So- And there are also, there's ways to get the education that's not getting a formal education, like a BA. There's community colleges, which you can do in, inexpensively. Mm -hmm. And there's online classes through like the UC extensions you can do inexpensively. Mm -hmm. So there are ways to- 
um, to get an education without having to do a MA or a, or a, an MPH or whatever it is. You can get your the, the specific education that you're looking for online right now. You know, it astounds me in this day and age, there is usually either a book written on pretty much any topic that you want to know something about. There's usually a YouTube video that tells you exactly how to do something specific. You know, so it's like we live in an age of easily obtainable knowledge, you know, through sources other than formal education. So, wow, go take advantage of it. Somebody's always doing a seminar, a webinar, a conference, a teaching class or something like that. And it's, it, to me, it's exciting because I have to kind of go, oh, I want to watch that, but I don't, you know, it's like, how am I going to fit that into my schedule? So it, you know, and, and podcasts, podcasts are amazing. I'm not tooting my own horn here, but you know, they're amazing. There's so many things that you can learn and, you know, that improve your life and will kind of help you with whatever you're doing. You just have to tailor your education to what it is that you want to learn. And, and that, that to me is exciting. Yeah. So, I agree. Uh, so, you know, we talked a little bit about your podcast, the mindful, happy kids, specifically, we're going to talk about that one. So how has that helped you as a children's author? It's kept me on my toes. <laughs> I would say that's the thing it does because before I interview someone, I have to research them in order to decide if I want to interview them or listen to their their um, interview on on online or hear them at a conference or whatever. So first, or read their book, and then I have to say, oh, okay, this person's interesting to me. Then I have to research them. Mm -hmm. Then I have to ask them if they get humble enough to ask them. Mm -hmm. Then I have to research them again and read all of their books. Mm -hmm. So I had one woman who wrote amazing books and I had to read Carolyn Marston and I had to read 18 of her book length books mm -hmm. in order to get ready for the podcast. Mm -hmm. And so I read all her books and they were all from different cultures. Mm -hmm. And there were, there were kids books from uh, actually adolescent books from different cultures. She called them cultural history. Mm -hmm. No, because cultural fiction. Mm -hmm. And there were um, books from different cultures. So I learned about all these different cultures as I was reading these books. So I, I was learning about that. And then I was, then I interviewed her and I learned even more. And I learned about poetry from the interviews that I do on poetry because I had to read all the poetry books and then I had to read all the books that they did on on heart mapping and then I had to read learn the books books on how to teach poetry because at some point in life I might want to teach poetry so it just keeps me on my toes keeps me educated and I have to listen to people talk about what they're most passionate about. Right, which to me is is this is like the best job. I mean, I, I go into classrooms and I talk to kids about, you know, being a writer, especially a children's writer. And I say, I have the greatest job in the world because I get to make stuff up for a living. And my second greatest job that I think out there is being a podcaster because yeah. not only do you get to read all of these amazing books that these authors put out there, you get to talk to them. You get to just find how they got to this journey in their life. And then you get to talk to them about the things that they're passionate about and learn some really, truly interesting things. And so I was just like, I'm with you. It's like, this, this is such a great platform for authors. And now we want to bring in kids and, and that's what you do. You bring in kids, so let, let them talk and let them express themselves, which is just amazing. Because I think oftentimes we, as you said, we forget to listen. We think we know. <laughs> I also, the podcast is for adults also for the parents, mm -hmm. not just dealing with kids. Sure. And I interviewed my cousin who opened some wellness centers mm -hmm. in on Long Island, New York. Mm -hmm. And he talked all about what he believes wellness is, which was really interesting. Mm -hmm. And then he was contacted by my mother because of this mm -hmm. and my father used to babysit for him when he was a little kid mm -hmm. and they spoke after not talking for 40 years 
Oh, wow. That's nice. Yeah, you so were that was just like a warm and fuzzy. It was just a warm and fuzzy. And I'm interviewing my physical therapist because he does holistic medicine. And I really like that. So it's a musician. So it's all kinds of people who are like from all kinds of areas mm-hmm. who I think have something to tell the world. Right. So you do have the two podcasts. So you have the second one, which is the, the mindful, happy adult and the mindful, happy kids. So can you kind of give us a distinction between the two so that people know which one they might want to tune into or both? They started separate and now they're pretty much the same. Ah, I see. Now I post on the same. Yeah, I started them as separate just for the adults and that's for the kids. But then I found that the people who were listening to the Mindful Happy Kids wanted the Mindful Happy Adults Mm -hmm. information and, and vice versa. So I have a following on each so I haven't taken one down. Right. But someday I might take one down and just have one. Okay. But 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 originally it started out with the the mindful happy kids was more about topics centered around kids and things that would be helpful to parents of children. And the other one was more about adult topics and interesting things to adults. But now you've just kind of merged them. Well, you know. That's what happens. It's like, you know, you have these ideas of like, oh, I want to talk about this, but I also want to talk about it. And then pretty soon they all just kind of merge and meld together. It's like, you know, when I started, I was like, ah, you know, I just want to talk about children's books. And I'm like, yeah, but I really, I read a lot of books. I read a lot, a lot of books. And I, so it's like, it, you know, I, I've learned a lot from you, which I'm very grateful for, you know, your advice and your help on getting my podcast started. So I do appreciate that. And I want to make sure we, we do send our audience to go check out your mindful, happy kids or your mindful, happy adults, which are going to eventually merge together. But we want to make sure we get you some audience members. And of course, you know, uh, we try to um, recommend people back and forth between our podcast and your podcast, which uh, uh, so where exactly can they find the podcast is it up on youtube other podcast channels where, where yeah we- you can find it it's all audio okay so you can find it on spotify apple google um amazon so you can find it basically wherever you find it. if you look up mindful happy kids mm-hmm. mindful comma happy kids mm-hmm. in a web browser mm-hmm. it shows up as the the podcast shows up okay And I do believe that we have a link to that in the show notes for you guys. So uh, if you want to check that out, and I believe they're also linked through your website. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, good. We'll we'll put the website up for you and uh, link you to her podcast directly. So we want to um, uh, talk a little bit about if any authors or writers would like to connect with you to possibly be a guest on your show how would they do that anyway and the best way to to reach me mm-hmm. is petitations at gmail.com so p-e-t pet i-t a-t-i-o-n-s so petitations at gmail.com okay and that's where you write me for the books and that's where you write me if you want to become a, a guest on my podcast all right well that's great and we will actually put that email address in the show notes with a little reminder this is how you would contact Liz if you want to be a guest or if you want to connect with her for her books so what's next for you you're so busy I mean I, you and I have such a hard time just connecting up to go have lunch it's like you're almost I am having there. lunch with you which is very exciting <laughs> um the book or uh, the creatures from the herb cafe is in the final I'm finally writing the first book and it's being edited right now. And then it's going to my 11 year old um, beta reader, which I'm excited to found one. So Mm -hmm. that's great. And then the book on anger, I mean, on anxiety Mm -hmm. is going to my, it's getting edited right now and it's going to the beta reader. It's getting edited by my, um, my, they call it a tutor in London. Right. So my tutor at the London Journal, London School of Journalism, mm-hmm. he's going to um, edit both books and send them back to me. Oh, well, that's, that's very exciting. So do we have any like projected date when these might be coming out uh, into 2023, 2024? Any, any no, ideas? I would say that, well, they're going to be um, put on my podcast first. Mm-hmm. 
I'm going to read them chapter by chapter by chapter. So probably within the next six months. Okay. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm putting the meditations mm -hmm. one by one set to music by Steve Gruskin. Okay. And he composed and played the music mm -hmm. and they're being put on the, the, the um, podcast one by one at each, the beginning of each month. Mm -hmm. And there are 12 of them. Oh. So the last through the year. So I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. and I'm having many more podcasts, so I'm looking for people, so if anyone's interested, just contact me. That'd be great, and I'm working on my next Pippi book. I'm not quite sure what... This one is going to be about a French horn, because my French horn teacher really wants me to write about a French horn. Right? Okay. So I think this French horn runs away. Yeah. Aww. Because it's misunderstood. Yeah. It happens. Wants to, <laughs> wants to play classical music and not band music and so it runs away okay well that that'll be exciting we'll we'll talk more about that so and you talked a little bit earlier about being on social media so where can we find you on social media you said you were on twitter and uh facebook is that correct yes facebook it's peditations okay twitter it's peditations okay and in instagram i mean pinterest instagram it's peditations eight okay all right so number eight all right so we will make sure that we get the links direct to uh liz's social media on twitter instagram and pinterest and facebook for you also her website and of course we'll include the email address at uh, peditations at gmail.com was there anything else that you would like to include the website is peditationsplus.com Okay, Peditations Plus. We will actually have that for you. Was there anything? And that's P L U S. Yes. Uh, was there anything else that you wanted to include before we go pull the ripcord on our tip of the week? No, I think that's about it. I think it was pretty, uh, pretty comprehensive. What do you think? Uh, I think we did an amazing job, and I think, of course, you always are so knowledgeable about this subject and i just love the fact that you found this something new in a world that feels like nothing new ever happens anymore so congrats it's gotta be you know that's the i'm going to end with this mm. have fun yes take care of yourself and have fun like if you're not having fun and doing what you're doing because i thought that there was no way i could find anything that would be nearly what I was doing before because I was a pretty successful researcher mm -hmm. and then I'm just like a children's book author really <laughs> and now I'm just like I love it it's so much fun so I I just suggest that people and if you have to keep your day job keep your day job but then have fun on the side absolutely I agree with you and like I said I I always say you know being a children's author is the greatest job in the world because we just get to make up things for a living I get to let my imagination just go completely wild which is so fun because I feel like as adults we're told to like oh rein that in rein that in slow it down you know get with reality and it's like I don't want to live in reality I want to I want to go have fun you know we're we're you know cats and dogs and and uh you know, cobras do yoga, you know, where we've got, you know, we've got a rat and a cat and a mouse, you know, and a pig and a frog, you know, as superheroes. It's like, I, I want to, I want to live in that world. So, all right, well, let's go pull the tip, uh, the tip of the week, the ripcord on the tip of the week. So we're going to talk a little bit about what Liz was talking about is one of her issues that she was dealing with. And that's about publicity and media. I often excuse me, I often hear this as something that most authors struggle with because we're creative. You know, as authors and writers, the majority of us are creative, which means that we often work in isolation or in limited controlled groups where we're talking about our emotions and our feelings and we're putting that into words, which is making us very vulnerable. But then to suddenly at the end of that shift gears and go, okay, now I got to go tell the world that this is what I think and not be afraid. And it's difficult. It's very difficult. And yes, there are people who will help you. And, but I will tell you specifically when you're talking about publicity and media, uh, we're talking about TV stations, radio stations, uh, magazines, newspapers and stuff like that. There are some things that you can do on your own 
there are actually a lot of big things that you can do on your own, but they do take time and they do take information and knowledge. So, you know, try to start small. And as I always, always, always say with any publicity, any media, any marketing, start with the end first. What is it that you're hoping to achieve? Do you want to sell a bunch of books? Do you want to be on national television? So you're going to go to a local station hoping that national um, conglomerate picks it up? Or are you wanting to be included in the community newspaper so that the local newspaper picks it up and then maybe a regional and then maybe a national television or uh, newspaper picks it up again, magazine sort of thing? Are all of these things done to eventually sell more books to get you uh, speaking engagement? What is it that you're wanting? What is it that you're trying to work for? Because if you understand what it is that you want, it makes the pathway to get there a lot cleaner and a lot clearer so that you're not spending your time going, oh, well, I'll go, I'll, I'll go do a new uh, television news interview or, oh, you know what? I'll go do this interview for this magazine. And, oh, you know what? I'm going to go do some uh some author visits and oh i'm going to go to this book festival and oh i'm going to do this local you know thing it's it, you're you're scattering your resources and you're running yourself all over the place and none of them are guiding you towards any specific point and this is what i see a lot with authors with writers with poets with uh you know published books we're so busy running around trying the newest most exciting thing or something that we saw that someone was successful with and we're like well i should do that you know i recently spoke with somebody who uh saw that that a person that they knew that that published a book and it was on a billboard in times square and they felt like that was a great thing and and while it is a great accomplishment it is something that anyone can do if you follow the steps it is something that anyone can do my question that person was well why would you want to be on a billboard in in times square is that where your audience is is that where you're going to go to get more book sales or get more speaking engagements or or get yourself wherever it is you need to get? and and their answer was well no and I'm like, well, then why would you want to do that? That seems like a lot of resources and time going into chasing something that isn't going to help you. So I just want to let you always remember education is out there. If you need help with publicity, with getting into media, there is always somebody, as Liz said, you know, there's extension courses that you can take to get you the nuts and bolts information of how to do this. But when you get to that point where you're going to do the how to do, sit down and make a plan. Decide what it is that you want because marketing and advertising dollars are limited. If you're continuing to publish, you cannot throw all of your money into publishing and marketing one book. You must spread that around, which means that your budget gets tighter and tighter. So you really do need to think about what it is you expect the outcome to be and work towards that. So that's all I'm going to add today. I know that you guys will follow up on this and have more information. Of course, if you have any questions today about anything that we covered in the podcast about our topic of the week or a tip of the week, of course, you can send us a message through the website, thewritersparachute.com, or you can leave us a question in the the show notes, either on the podcast platform you're listening to or on the YouTube podcast platform for the Writer's Parachute. And of course, you can contact us again, like I said, through the website or on social media. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok now at Writer Parachute. That's Writer Parachute with no S. Of course, we want you to follow us there. Don't forget about the Buy Me a Coffee. We will have a link for you for that to help support us here at the Writer's Parachute. And of course, we always love to hear from you. If you have a comment about any of our podcasts, if you would like to suggest writers or authors or topics or subjects or tips that you would like to see included, please be sure to let us know. We're always listening to our listeners because we serve you. So, 
I want to thank Liz, Dr. Page, for being here with us today. I really thank hope you. That you're very welcome. And I really hope that you go out and check out her podcast, Mindful Happy Kids, Mindful Happy Adults, and check out her book series, The Peditations. And we'll have all the links to that for you in the show notes. And don't forget, we hope that all of your writing dreams land well. So until next time, bye. Bye-bye.